let's get started. So, one thing I want to show you really quick too, um, when you saw before the the, the code cake and taking a legitimate executable and backdooring it, there's a couple commands you can pick it back. I just want to show you. So, you do MSF payload, Windows, Interpreter, Find, TCP, do L4. You can do MSM code multiple times. So, you can do MSM code. Um, let's just do encoder x86. We'll do let's do alpha upper. Do count two. And then we'll pipe it again. We'll do X. We're gonna take ping.exe, I'll put it as payload. We'll do ten. So you can see here, we actually take a normal, you know, MSF payload interpreter. We encode it via alpha numeric, uh, alpha upper, which strips out a lot of character tags in it. Um, and then we do what we do again is we then encode it again with Chicago guy and So you can actually stack encoding on top of each other for better antivirus uh, evasion if you want to. Doesn't really make a difference. How does that affect the file size? You can see here, it's uh, 6,300 bytes. Um, so it does definitely affect the file size, but Chikata is a very lightweight, um, and, and I, don't, I don't know if this explained before, but Chikata is polymorphic, which is why antivirus vendors have such a tough time finding it. Uh, so what ends up happening is every single time you create that executable, it's different. So every single time it's going to be completely obfuscated in a way that's polymorphic, it, it, it changes every single time. Uh, so what you can do is you can, you know, if, if it gets hit by one of your, one of the antivirus vendors out there, you can just recode it again and it might get past that time. Uh, or you can do multi-encoding, which makes it much more difficult for it to detect. Um, but just so you know, you can do multiple encoding options if you want to actually go through and do it. Now, hey, uh, Martin. Yeah. What's the one that has the um, SQL Server on it? Oh, I just reread it until you got wait a second, but it's 128. So on 128, there's a SQL Server um, involved. And I just wanted to show you something really quick with MSF uh, Console. One of the um, modules that I wrote for it uh, for, for Metasploit, uh, there's this thing called MS SQL Payload. And I don't know if you know, but when you install Microsoft SQL Server, um, there's two modes that you can install it with, you can, or three. You can install it with Windows Authentication, uh, Mixed Authentication, and SQL Server Authentication, right? And if you do Mixed or SQL Server, it prompts you to say, hey, do you want to, you have to create an SA account, a Systems Administrator account for SQL. Uh, so what ends up happening with that is, when you create that password, a lot of times when administrators are installing it, uh, they don't really think of a complex password, right? They put a password or your company name or, you know, SA. SA is always a good one. <laughs> Iron Geek, you know, whatever it is, you know. But uh, it could be any of those. Um, generally, they're pretty easy to get. And, and what's interesting about this is most corporations have a ton of SQL servers. Tons. I mean, they're just everywhere. Sometimes they get installed with MSDE on some application that they're installing, so some client workstation will have. And if you think your users are putting complex passwords in there, <laughs> Ooh. But um, it, it's a very good attack record. What I'm about to show you is when you can guess the SA account, the Systems, systems Administrator account, and it gives you full rights over SQL, right? So now we're running as a Systems Administrator over SQL. Well, what could this really do is we want to pop a box. Well, luckily, Microsoft graced us with what they call the XP Command Shell Store Procedure. And if you can guess what that is, you can actually execute underlying operating system commands. Well, unfortunately, I mean, they actually got, you know, they, they got, you know, pretty good with it. And they said, okay, well, in server 2005 and server 2008, we're by default in server 2010, I think, right? Uh, we're by default going to disable the XP command shells for procedure. However, if you're running this SA, you can re-enable within SQL anyway. So, I mean, <laughs> so once you have access to the XP command shells for procedure, what does it really give you? It gives you access to you know, execute commands on an online operating system, maybe add yourself an administrator. And generally, what's SQL running as? System. It's running as an admin. Um, <clears throat> so one thing we did uh, when, when uh, this is a DEF Pen 16 talk, and what we ended up doing is we figured out a way to take an executable, so a Metasploit payload, right, a, a backdoor, you know, so an interpreter. And what we did was we take this payload and we converted it into hex. And so it's just this big text file of hex, hexadecimal equations, right? What we do from there is we echo the hex back onto the underlying operating system through SQL. So you get this big text file of hex on your underlying operating system, right? So it's just 
big text file. Well, Windows graced us with this um, application called Windows Debug. And with Windows Debug, you can basically take that hex as long as it's formatted properly and then convert it back to a binary for us. So we basically have a reliable method of getting any file we want to on the system if we want to. But, you know, again, we can only work with 64 kilobytes because the Windows Debug's restriction is 64 kilobytes. Uh, so what we did was we wrote a 5 kilobyte file that was basically Windows Debug without the restrictions. And then so we convert that first, and then we send the rest of our payload over without the restrictions so it can be as big as you need to. Um, so that was kind of interesting. But I wanted to show you these modules. It's pretty slick. So if you do a search for MS SQL, you see there's a couple of ones. We're going to do the MS SQL ping first. So we're going to use scanner slash MS SQL slash MS SQL ping. We can do show options. Now, one thing that's interesting enough, too, is with SQL Server 2005 and 2008, you use this dynamic port allocation, okay? So you can either specify it on this default port, which is 1433, or you can specify a random dynamic port, so 53,000, you know, whatever. Well, how are you going to find that port? What's that? What's I'm saying? SQL what? SQL ping. SQL ping. Well, right, how does it work? <laughs> There's like a listener for the SQL server that's where all the instances are going on there. The UDP listener browser, right? So, right. So what ends up happening is you move it from 1433, it's on some dynamic crazy port. There's also port 1434 UDP, which says, oh, hey, I'm a SQL server. And by the way, it's, it's on port 53,722 uh, if you need it. And by the way, it's this version of SQL server. And here's the name of it. So just in case you needed all that information, just, just so you know, it's, it's there. So, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to um, run the SQL ping tool. So we're going to set our host to one sending my, my range that, that you guys don't have access to. Actually, it'll give you a list of all the SQL servers. Not necessarily. On it. Not server 2005 and 2008. Oh. Yeah, the, the SQL recon discovery method that they use that, like, from the older tools would actually broadcast where all of them are at. Um, you can technically query other SQL servers as long as you know their IP address, but you can't do it directly and, and list all of them. Okay. But you can still get all the instances on that particular Absolutely. Yeah, all the instances are shown for sure. Thread. 